What if I told you that everything you're hearing about AI taking over the workplace is totally a fantasy? So while tech bros are promising an AI utopia, I've been inside the actual corporate IT departments and folks, there's a massive disconnect between the hype and what's actually happening in real business. So here's a question that should keep every executive awake at night. Why are 75% of all AI initiatives failing to deliver any measurable returns? And why is AI search, the thing we use the most, already getting noticeably worse just two years in? Because while Silicon Valley is building castles in the clouds, corporate America is still trying to get their printers to work consistently. So today I'm exposing the huge gap between vendor promises and IT reality and what the disconnect is about and what this feels like in actual corporate America. Let's dive in. Welcome to Startup Hack, I'm Spencer, and here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers and build custom software solutions for companies. With a decade of executive leadership as a fractional CTO and 25 years in software development, I've mastered transforming tech teams and products. All right, so the AI hype machine is running absolutely full throttle, and there's a dirty little secret that nobody wants to talk about. There's a, ma there's a huge chasm between what the vendors are promising and what corporate IT departments can actually implement. Now, let me show you exactly how wide this gap is, because we're going to break some of this down today. Now, tech vendor CEOs are living in a completely different reality from the CIOs who are actually having to implement their products. So I've, I've worked with vendor presentations where executives pitch AI transformation to companies that are still running Windows 7 on half their machines. So these vendors spend millions of dollars on marketing campaigns promoting futures that have zero connections to the real current IT infrastructure. So I know that in my experience, I've learned early that the most ambitious technology roadmaps mean nothing if your team can't execute them. So the disconnect is so wide that vendor CEOs couldn't tell you the real daily challenges that face their own customers. So when vendors marketing, bud, uh, marketing budget exceeds their customer success investment, you know that priorities are backwards. So let's kind of dive into a couple of these reports and talk about what I'm seeing here so that you don't think I'm just making this up here, right? So I'm going to go into just a couple of these reports. So this is a report from, from Fortune. AI experimentation inside companies have been moving swiftly, but it's not always going smoothly. The share of companies that have scrapped the majority of their AI initiatives jumped from 17% to 42% this year so far. So we're only halfway through the year, right? But like, so in 2024, 17% scrapped their AI initiatives and then 42% have scrapped it this year. Now, this is based on a survey of over a thousand respondents. Overall, the company abandoned, uh, the average company abandoned 46% of its AI proof of concepts rather than deploying them. Now, this is about what I was finding from the IBM reports as well, is that only 16% of all initiatives actually reach product production. The other part of this that's really interesting is they're finding a higher use rate of employees who use AI hitting burnout than those who don't, right? So that's kind of the synopsis of this one here. Now, this one actually comes through and says AI project failure rates are on the rise, right? So this is actually one of the articles that, it, that it's linking to. And it says more enterprise reported AI project failures this year than compared to last year. Um, the average organization scrapped 46% of its AI proof of concepts. They also are citing uh, cost, data privacy, security risk are some of the big reasons, right? And so they're also saying AI adoption is predominantly found in IT operations followed by customer experience workflows and marketing processes. So those are the areas that they're finding this. Now, again, I, like I opened with, I bet a lot of these companies would just like their printers to actually work a little bit more consistently. But CIOs through the organization progressed with a generative AI wasn't up to par in 2023 and experiments continued to fail. Now, let's jump over to this one here, right? So TechCrunch is reporting that the corporate AI adoption may be leveling off, right? So according to this, it says, as of May, 49% of large businesses that deploy AI in some form compared to 44 of medium and 30% of small. But they say that it only looks at a sample of the corporate data here. Uh, so they talked about Klarna's failure, which we've talked about plenty here, but they're saying that this is seeing a, an actual, uh, adoption slowing down, right? So that's the point is that they're seeing that this is actually slowing down compared to previous years. Now, there is some numbers here that says AI work has doubled over, you know, the, uh, the AI use at work has doubled over two, like for over the last two years. But let's actually look at this for a minute here, right? So they're saying that a few times a week is 19%, daily is only 8%. So this is saying that it's doubled from 4% to 8% over last year. Okay, like I hear the word double and everybody starts to run for the hills and we're fine, only 8% are using this every day, 19% using a few times per week, 
and 40% a few times a year or more, okay? So like again, these numbers are kind of funny to me because it's like in 23, it was 4%, 24 was 4%. I would only really consistently, if, I, if I'm talking about somebody actually adopting AI, I'm talking about somebody who's using it every day. I mean, even if we said, you know, more than once a week, let's even, I'll even give you that. So 12 to 19%, okay? Again, we're seeing that like that adoption rate is not going as quickly as everybody wants you to believe. And that's kind of what I wanted to dig in today, right? Is vendors talk all about AI agents replacing entire departments. Most IT teams are still struggling with some basic system integrations. The average enterprise has hundreds of legacy systems that need to talk to each other before any AI magic can even happen. So I've consulted with a lot of companies where digital transformation means finally getting everyone off of Internet Explorer. Real IT work is not glamorous. It's about making sure that payroll runs or that systems stay secure or that a user can log in. Like how much of IT is resetting passwords, right? The future is built one boring, reliable task at a time, not through a bunch of flashy AI demos. So companies are discovering a really huge, brutal truth. There's a massive gap between the AI proof of concepts and the production deployment. So I've seen organizations spend six months trying to build AI demos that worked perfectly in isolation, but fall apart as soon as it connects to real business processes. So the engineering challenges of deploying AI enterprise scale are being dramatically underestimated by everybody involved. But AI is gonna solve everything for you, right? So you don't need to worry about that. But there's a lot of things to worry about here. There's data quality, there's security, uh, securing your, your security and compliance, right? There's integration complexity that will kill most of these AI projects. So most enterprise lack the foundational data infrastructure needed to make AI actually useful for their specific business needs. So we need to build reliable AI systems, and it requires a lot of boring engineering principles to get there. Now, according to IBM's recent study of 2,000 CEOs, only 25% of AI initiatives are delivering expect, expected return, and that's of that 16% that, that did, right? But here's a bigger uh, kicker. 64% of company adopt, uh, adopted AI because of fear of missing out, not because they had a clear business case. Companies are waking up to realize that they've spent millions on AI solutions that don't actually solve the real problems that are facing their business. The pressure to do something with AI has led to implementations of solutions that are that are solutions looking for problems, not the other way around. So when executives start asking, what exactly did we get for all that AI spending? There's often a lot of uncomfortable silence. Smart companies are returning back to the basics. They're identifying the problem first, then evaluating if AI is actually the right solution. Now, if you have solutions that you need help with, reach out to us because here at Startup Pack, our specialty is connecting systems so your company can work to maximum efficiency. Check out startuppack.com slash Spencer because we love to help you out. Now, AI search results are already getting noticeably worse, and most people haven't even realized it yet. When AI systems are training on their own output, they gradually lose accuracy and start producing increasingly re unreliable results. So we've been tracking this personally, asking AI for business statistics now returns numbers from sketchy summary sites that are usually three, four, five, and six years old, right? This is what we call model collapse. It's happening right now, not in some distant future scenario. AI systems training on AI generated content creates a feedback loop that compounds errors across successive generations. So the quality degrade is subtle at first, but it accelerates rapidly as the collapse starts to happen. So a good analogy here, if you take a copy or a Xerox of one piece of paper, and then you take the copy of that one and put it back into the Xerox or the copy machine again, and you do that process five times where you're taking the copy, by the fifth and sixth time, it becomes almost unreadable. This is actually very similar to what's happening with the model collapse, where we're seeing the AI data starting to collapse. And this is part of the frustration that people are having with a lot of these projects. So everyone wants, to, everyone wants to deploy AI, but qualified people who can actually implement it properly are the unicorns. This is the reason we see Mark Zuckerberg trying to lure people away to help them build their next AI, and he's uh, offering ridiculous sums to try to um, poach people from other companies. So I've watched companies promote regular developers to AI engineers just because they took a weekend course on AI. The gap between what businesses think AI can do and what their teams can actually build is enormous. And this is also the big problem because they're coming out to other people to uh, purchase expensive AI systems with the hopes that they can integrate them into their old legacy systems. So finding people who understand both AI technology and their really real business use case and the integration point is becoming increasingly 
uh, harder to find. So this talent shortage is get, isn't getting better. It's actually getting worse because AI is actually crippling some developers as they get lazier and lazier. Now, corporate AI isn't failing because the technology is bad. It's failing because enterprise systems are incredibly complex. Every company has decades of technical debt that makes implementing new technology a nightmare. So I've seen AI projects get derailed by something as simple as incompatible data formats between systems built five years apart. So the really unglamorous reality is that successful AI deployment is 80% plumbing and 20% percent actual artificial intelligence. Most AI vendors have never had to integrate their solution with a 20 year old ERP system held together with Excel macros and a prayer. Real enterprise AI success requires the same methodical system integration work that's been keeping IT busy for decades. And that work's not going to go away. AI is not going to solve that problem. AI will not work on old systems. And that's part of the problem with AI. I'm not an AI negative. I get a lot of flack out there from you guys being like, you just don't understand AI. Look guys, I do, I'm an AI realist, but that last point cannot be understated enough. The real unglamorous reality of software development and IT integrations is that AI deployments are 80% plumbing and 20% actual AI. And I think that might even be a high number, right? When you're dealing with these old systems and you got to get them connected together, this is one of our specialties. We spend a lot of time working on this. And so when you then have to try to add AI into it, not only are you worrying about the compliance, you're worrying about security, and on top of it, you're just worrying about bad data, right? So garbage in, garbage out, right? AI projects are hitting brick walls when they encounter real enterprise security and compliance requirements. Sending sensitive corporate data to a third-party AI service creates regulatory nightmares that legal teams can't solve quickly. So I've consulted with healthcare and financial companies where AI projects died the moment someone mentions HIPAA or SOX compliance. The regulatory framework for AI is heavily regulated industry and they're moving faster. So many AI solutions require data handling practices that directly conflict with existing corporate security policies. So companies are learning that move fast and bring things doesn't quite work when you're talking about compliance and worrying about customer data. So most executives are approving AI budgets, have absolutely no idea what their technical debt stack look like. And I've been in these boardrooms where C-suite leaders thinks AI is a silver bullet with that magically can solve their problems. However, the communication gap between AI vendors and business leaders is creating unrealistic expectations on both sides. And that's why I'm an AI realist, right? So I get a flack all the time for you guys saying, oh, you're just negative, you're hating on AI. I'm not, I'm just the realist to get this integrated. When executives don't understand the technology, when they're ignoring their technical debt, when they're ignoring the fact that their developers are already understaffed and they believe that AI is gonna come in and replace their developers or magically solve some of these problems, they don't understand and they aren't making informed decisions about implementation priorities just because they're worried that they're not going to be able to get to the next board meeting and say that they didn't implement AI in their organization. So this knowledge gap leads to an AI projects that are technically impressive, but completely irrelevant to the business or worse, a security nightmare or worse, I implemented in isolation and not connected to anything in their business, which is actually going to end up slowing them down. Success requires exe executives who understand both of the capabilities and the limitations of the current AI reality. So while everyone's talking about AI transformation, most IT departments are still fighting fires with basic operational issues. The day-to-day -day reality of corporate IT is maintaining existing systems, not implementing revolutionary shiny new things. So I've seen companies announce AI initiatives while their help desk is drowned in password reset tickets. Before you can leverage AI for competitive advantage, you need excuse me, you need to nail down the fundamentals of reliable, secure operations. The most successful AI implementations happen at companies that already have excellent operational discipline and mature IT processes. So you got to fix your operation basics, and that isn't sexy, but it's prerequisite for making meaningful AI deployment. So AI vendors are making promises about outcomes that they have no ability to deliver. When AI pro projects fail, vendors disappear faster than my motivation, motivational exercise, my motivation to exercise on January 2nd. The responsibility gap between AI vendor promises and actual customer success is enormous, and it's growing. It's not getting better. 
I've seen contracts where vendors take credit for AI successes, but accept zero liability when the AI fails. Most AI vendors have never had to support their technology through a real enterprise deployment life cycle. And I was just up until like 1 a.m. last night working on a deployment. So trust me, I get this. Companies need vendors who understand that selling AI technology is just the beginning, not the end of customer relationship. So real progress happens when companies focus on direct, uh, directional cor correct investments rather than chasing vendor visions of AI utopia. The future isn't built through revolutionary leap. It's built through disciplined, incremental improvements to existing systems. Smart companies are asking, how does this AI investment help us to do our current job better? Instead of how will this AI transform everything for me? Or how can I get .ai in my name? Success comes through connecting AI capabilities to real business processes that already work, not trying to rebuild everything from scratch. The most valuable AI implementations solve specific, measurable problems for specific business functions. This was what Chad Nadala was talking about when he said he wants to actually see the GDP move before he calls anything with AI a success. So whether you're talking about a company, whether you're talking about a department, whether you're even just talking about a process, until AI delivers measurable difference. So we just looked at that article. It's like AI has doubled the use case from eight to 16 or from four to 8%. That's not measurable to me. Building the future requires built the same boring engineering disciplines. That's always separated successful companies from uh, failures. And that's where here at Startup Hack, we really specialize in helping companies to work to maximum efficiency by focusing on the simple practices to get systems connected. So check out startuphack.com slash Spencer. Now, what do you guys think? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Do you think I'm just hating on AI? I get a lot of people who think I'm hating on AI and they think I've just like uh, said something derogatory about their mother or something. But here at Startup Hack, we love to train software developers as well as to build custom software solutions for companies. So if we can help you, reach out. And as always, make sure you like and subscribe and share these videos. Best compliment I can get is when you guys leave a comment down below. And here's some great information about our services. Hi, my name is Spencer Thomason, and I'm a fractional CTO. With over a decade of executive leadership and a solid 25 years in software development, I've mastered the art of transforming technology teams and products. So what is a fractional CTO? This is where you can contract someone like myself to come into your organization and get the benefits of a seasoned CTO without having to employ me full time. In today's fast paced world, efficiency, security, and product scaling aren't just goals, they're necessities. My passion is building impactful products and enhancing organizational efficiencies through technology. From startups to small businesses, my approach leverages lean methodologies to not just meet, but exceed your strategic goals. Whether it's through executive mentoring, cloud system architecture, or launching a minimum viable product swiftly, my aim is to make a significant impact right from the start. Recognized in the Arizona startup ecosystem, my journey has been about creating value and fostering innovation. I have led technology for companies like GoDaddy, SRP, and Wells Fargo, and turned challenges into milestones. I've taken this learning and launched seven of my own brands, and now I want to help you. So if you're looking for a fractional CTO who brings a wealth of experience, strategic vision, and a proven track record, let's connect. Together we can build technology that not only drives your business forward, but also makes a difference. Technology leadership redefined to fit your needs. So reach out today.